Um, I watched the video recently, and it was basically about, and I know I just preached to y'all about lighting in the video and everything, but this is just so random, and the spirit is moving me. Like, this is my year of real transparency. I've been transparent in the the past, but I am... I'm going to do this. <laughs> Number one, I hate crying in front of people. I fucking hate crying in front of people. I do not talk about my feelings and express myself like this. So, y'all have to be patient with me and bear with me. So, let me just say this. Okay. So, the journey in 2016, I got diagnosed with PCOS right this journey actually happened way before then that was just a medical diagnosis of somebody actually digging in and figuring out what is going on so this actually started with me when i was like in the 11th grade um for sure the 11th grade so that was 2004 uh 2005 and oops, lord jesus okay i first started noticing and i still have it on this finger as you can if you can see that there's a line a dark line here that's not the only finger this one too, i'm not trying to flip y'all but this is the other finger i noticed that there were lines this one was the only one at first. This one came later on. And then I have another one on my toe. So this came first. The one on my toe came second. And then this one came last. So that's what I first noticed. And when I went to the doctor, I actually made a joke about it. Because, you know, prom was coming up that next year. And I said, what is this? Because when I go get my nails done, this is going to ruin everything or whatever. And she's like, oh, your iron is just low. I'm going to put you on iron pills. That was when I first got put on iron pills. And I'm supposed to be taking that daily, but we'll get into that discussion. And I'll let y'all bash me another time. But, um, so I got put on iron pills. But the second thing that I noticed that started to happen was I... And guys, I know y'all don't want to hear this. <laughs> some of the men y'all do not want to hear this but we're gonna be transparent we having some girl talk this is what we do um so the second thing that i noticed is my irregular periods so when i say irregular periods i mean the whole football season i did not have a period that whole 11th grade that was that whole fifth of uh, that whole november to like i think after the christmas break ended um I didn't have a period at all and for years to come it would be the same way I and I'm still the same way um after I had Kyron my second born I after you know when you give birth you have that little seven day period I had that and then I hadn't had a period the whole year after him so it can fluctuate. It can get wild. I can go months, even a year, without a period. And I just thought it was normal at the time. I wasn't educated, and I hadn't ran into people that were educated on PCOS. And this thing wasn't really a, a, um, a big thing. You know, as it is now, people are just starting to bring awareness to it, and some people still don't have it figured out. So, I, um... Uh, um, this is so hard to talk about. I do not do this, especially on camera. I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to protect myself from not crying. So if you see me pausing, I'm trying to be like, man, I'm, don't, don't be no bitch. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying in my head. So don't, don't say the wrong things that's going to trigger you to cry in front of all these people. So <laughs> I hate doing that. So the last time I cried in front of a crowd, I wanted to beat somebody up. <laughs> but back to it. So, 
irregular periods and then I got on birth control when I was 18. So 2007, I got the shot and then the first time everything went well. Uh, I had no period for three months and then it went back to, you know, the regular thing. So then I, uh, I'm going to get the, I'm in the bathroom, so I'm going to get the toilet just in case. I'm going to get the toilet paper. And I'm sitting in my daughter's chair, by the way. So, I, uh, I, uh, oh, this is so difficult to talk about. My God. <laughs> All right. So, I would get on birth, birth control a couple of more times. So, I got on the shirt, the shot the first time, it was fine. I got on the shot the second time, it was not fine. And I should have caught on. When I tell you my mood swings was out the wazoo, it was crazy. I bled, I didn't have a period for three months and then I bled for three months. So didn't do that again. Didn't have fun with that. I was actually, it was torture. So um, then after that, a couple of years flew by, whatever. I had already had Jalea and I can't remember what age she was, but this, well, this was 2014. So, so she had to be about four. And then I decided to go ahead and get the IUD. Um, out of recommendations and doctors telling me hey you might not want to have a now mind you i had your layer at 22 so i was not like i was young i was not financially stable uh, i was still trying to find my own way and trying to meet my husband and i and i were trying to stay afloat for her so that's where we were in that that's where i was in that in that space so technically, no, we could not afford another kid. You know, we did not, we wanted another kid, but we really could not afford another kid. And uh, so I got on the IUD. The IUD, when I, it happened, um, and this is why listening to your body and listening to your gut instincts is so important because when they inserted that, I would feel pains in my cervix. So it was inserted wrong anyway. And it was very painful. So, uh, okay, I'm not going to lie to you. I did try to get it out with no success. And then um, that's how much it had me in pain. Like, it was stabbing me. So, and I thought it was being embedded in some kind of way. Like, the doctor's visits and it, it was just difficult. Like, it was weird. So, Christmas 2014, it actually came out while I was in the shower. Oh my gosh, it was crazy. It was painful. So you know what I said after that? I'm done. No more experimenting with my body. Even co-workers told me before I was doing that, they were like, you shouldn't do that. You know, if you're going to have a baby, if it's meant to be, it's going to happen. And if it's not, then it's not. <sighs> so anyways, I, um, with that, it came out. And I was like, you know what? No more birth control. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So shortly after that, I started bleeding for months. I mean, continuous bleeds. And I, it was so bad, I used to have to hold my legs together to um, go to the restroom and hope that I would make it to the... Sometimes I made it, sometimes I didn't without it bleeding through my pants. And I mean, there wasn't no light bleed it was a heavy bleed and this was happening at work and i would find myself getting in trouble because managers and co-workers would wonder why i was in the bathroom so long you know i, I wasn't really thinking i'm thinking this is just my body regulating itself because i haven't had a period in a while so maybe this is normal i didn't have a stable doctor at the time not a doctor that i could trust and i was in search of a doctor which that is very hard to find. Um, so I'm at work, getting in trouble. Uh, people just questioning, you know, why are you in the, and you know, why not tell asking me to my face, but going to corporate office and having these discussion amongst each other of why am I in the bathroom so long? Some would, some would ask me, but they were coworkers. They had no real power, but you know, um, so. Shortly after that, March 2015, I had a blood transfusion. Um, what happened with that was 
I had had him, how I fit, like, got how it got to that point was I was a property manager at that point. I had went from working at a motel. I was working at a motel when that bleeding incident happened. Then I moved to property management. My job was a little bit more lax, but um, still it demanded a lot of me. So I was neglecting myself a lot in eating and everything and just, you know, caring for myself. I put everybody's needs above my own. So I wasn't doing the right thing. I wasn't taking, a, I wasn't being responsible in self-care. And uh, I started getting these really bad headaches. I went to every hospital you could think of that was close to me at the time. And people were like, oh, no, you're fine. It's just a headache. One person said, one hospital said, oh, it's just a migraine. They gave me a shot. They made me so woozy. Like, we had stairs at the time that led up to our room. I couldn't even walk myself up the steps. My husband had to carry me to the bed. I went to another hospital, one that actually saved my life when I was, because I had an incident when I was pregnant, where I had to be hospitalized uh, for like a week and a half. And that same hospital told me, well, your iron is extremely low. It was so bad. I knew something was wrong. It hurt to cry. It hurt to cry, and I barely could talk. All I had the strength to do was, all I had the strength to do was shake my head. And I remember how I felt in that moment. And I was so scared. They they admitted me. Well, they tried to discharge me and let me go to another hospital. Because, you know, I was in between doctors. And they were like, well, do you just want to go over there? I'm like, you know, my sister and my husband was there. They was in warrior mode. She was like, you really going to discharge my sister in pain, in tears? And no, no. And they was like, well, we got to hear from her. Man. I said, hey, whatever she said. <laughs> that's uh, and I said just like that like I, I I barely could breathe it was it was bad so uh they admitted me and they gave me the transfusion I remember going to sleep and I remember waking up and I remember when I woke up I gasped for air I don't know what happened in between that time but I gasped for air and I felt much better it was the scariest thing that you could have went through in my life. Completely changed after that. I had a whole different outlook on self-care and self-awareness. After that point, I can't even look in the camera because I don't want to see myself cry. <laughs> like, Y'all can look at me cry, but I'm not, I might not even watch this video back. I might not even edit it. Because um, if I edit it or look at it, I'm just not. I might not even post it. But and it's so hard to say that my life changed after that even especially in my career field i feel like i sacrificed so much in my career i i can remember not going on dates because people needed me to come into work this is before my husband of course i'm not going on dates while i'm married but <laughs> turning people down on dates and stuff like that to go into work because they needed me to come in and Stuff like just living my life. I thought about parties and stuff that I said no to. You know that other people my age was like, man, fuck that. I ain't going into work. I'm going to go live my life. Me, I was like, okay, I'm going to be responsible. This is actually going to get me somewhere in life. And I, I'm just working to be a better person. And it got me nowhere but in the hospital. And that's what I looked at it as. I ran myself raggedy for people who, when I called them and told them where I was, asked me when was the next day I was going to be able to come in to work. Like, you didn't care that I was damn near about to die. You know? All you were worried about was feeling in the work that you didn't want to do. You know? People really fucking killed me, for real. And everything just changed for me. I looked at things differently, like, as far as jobs go. And I feel like God catapulted me out of that. I was seeking to be, I wanted to be a property manager. I wanted to go up the corporate ladder. I wanted to be this badass boss bitch. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted for myself. That I didn't dream about as a little girl. I didn't dream about being somebody's wife. Or somebody's mother. 
I wanted to be a boss motherfucking bitch. I'm not going to lie to you. That's what I wanted to be when I grew up. I didn't dream about wedding gowns. I dreamed about pantsuits and, <laughs> and, and five-inch stilettos and walking into a meeting and saying, hey, this is how it's going to be. This is my views and what I think. And, and I know I'm right because it's showing statistics on the chart and shit. That's what I dreamed of. That's what I wanted. When I was younger, as a kid, I wanted to be that bitch in the room, you know. And my life just didn't turn out that way. I worked so hard to create that image and be that image when I didn't even realize I was already that. That was already inside me. And I didn't need this image of what movies portray and what people portray is boss-like. And, you know, I don't knock anybody who works. And I don't knock anybody who keeps a job and stuff like that. But sometimes these jobs are very toxic. And guess what? It's like my grandmother told me. They're going to keep going on even though you're not here. You'll be six feet in the ground and they'll replace your ass the next day. <laughs> you drop dead. They got somebody in line that'll take your, your spot in two hours. You know? And... I didn't think about that. You know, I, I, I was very judgmental and I was very, you don't see things until things start happening to you. You don't, you don't see it from that side of the fence. And it really gets me online when people make these, cycle these memes around about people not being able to hold jobs or keep jobs and stuff. You know, I get it. There are some people who just have no get up and go about themselves. And I have a lot of thoughts on that as far as depression goes and anxiety and the things that people battle and stuff. But sometimes people get ill. Sometimes people get ill and they can't. There are people who are ill and they push through and they can work. And there are some people. And there are some people that push through and can work ill. And there are some people who cannot. PCOS affects people in different ways. I know some people with PCOS that can work or function as well as they can. Me, personally, it's like the Joker is living inside of my body. One day, I can remember working at a bank, and I ate a honey bun. And then, like, I was doing fine with the money and the accounts and everything. I ate, like, a simple honey bun. And then, I it was like I was a whole different person. It was so bad. They even noticed it. They was like, what the fuck just happened? Because you was on top of the world a few minutes ago. And now you just fucking everything up. Like, what is going on? What did you do in between that time and this? I said, I ate a honey bun. They said, you know what? Don't eat that shit when you come here. Don't eat nothing sweet, nothing with sugar, nothing. You know, and it, it, it's not even just that. It's just, I can, I could not have sugar. I've seen, I've had incidents, incidents or days when... I didn't have sugar and it's my body still went haywire. You know, I, I you can eat healthy. You can do all the things that you're supposed to do and your body still goes another way. All you're doing is trying to help or put forth effort in the symptoms and what's going on. But yeah, I, my life totally took a, a, a different turn and, um, To anybody who's going through that, you know, it 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 gets better. And if you have a support system, for sure, just lean on them. Because it ain't many people that you can talk to, especially when you have an invisible illness. People will look at this video and be like, oh, she looks fine. She looks healthy. Like, smart what the fuck she talking about? You know, like, what is she going through? I've heard people say that to me. Like, what's your problem? What's wrong with you? You're so mean. You know, you're this and that, or you're thin, and people don't understand that the words that you say and the things that you speak and how you say it to people can affect them. You know, people can be so inconsiderate. You know, I had this one time, I was working, let's go back to the bosses. I was I had stepped down from that property manager position because at the time we still needed two sources of income. We did. We needed it. And I had to go in no matter how I felt until it got bad, until it got worse. And I can remember there was this manager. Now, mind you, I'm making him look good. 
I stepped down to be assistant manager. I got the accounts where they needed to be. I had corporate office was sending him letters <laughs> congratulating him on shit that I was doing that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't even for me. And he was so caught up in thinking, oh, she's going to take my job. Oh, she's going to take my job. You know, it's to the point where he would sit in my office and literally just distract me and bug the fuck out of me and, and pick with me just because he thought that I wanted his position. He was intimidated because he, he, we weren't in the same space. He, he thought when he hired me that we were either equals or I was lesser than. He didn't know that what I was saying in the interview was true because everybody talks the talk. But when you get somebody who actually talks the talk and walk the walk, people don't like that combination because they used to people not living up to what they say and do. And I can remember going to corporate office because he had did some inappropriate things. And I felt like at that point I could not talk to him. So maybe we needed a third party. Of course, corporate offices don't want to be bothered with drama underneath them. So they want you to figure that out among themselves. But one thing that struck me was they said, yeah, he came to us. Now, mind you, he never said <laughs> this to me or thought to pull me to the side and have a conversation with me, which I would have appreciated and I could have explained, you know, uh, this remember when I told y'all that I was going to the bathroom and holding my legs together because I was bleeding. And that was one of the places where I had to be in the bathroom and just kind of let it stop, you know. He went back and told them that I spent a lot of time in the bathroom. And he doesn't know why. And, you know, never ever spoke to me about this. Never pulled me to the side and said, hey, I'm a little concerned. Um, I've noticed that you've been in the bathroom for quite some time. It's not... What woman wants to come to a man, first of all, a man most definitely that ain't ever been inside of me. <laughs> Sorry, family members. <laughs> you know, I'm not about to tell him my vagina news. Like, I'm not, about to, I'm not about to tell no man I haven't had intercourse with my vagina story. Like, <laughs> the fuck? Like, I just go randomly come up to you. Now, if you ask me, you know, you're my supervising you say hey i noticed that you've been in the bathroom you know pull me to the side alone or in your office alone and say hey i noticed that you've been in the bathroom for quite some time is something going on what's going on is there an issue or something i would have spilled all the tea and let you know what was going on but for you to do that you know it, it hurt and it was very insensitive and it was wow like and then there was another job after that that I took. And then that was 2015. That was the last time I felt like I was under a spiritual spiritual attack. I actually talked to my husband about it when um, it happened. And I told him, I said, I feel like I'm about to get fired. Four hours later, I got fired. I said, I feel like I'm under a spiritual attack. I feel like something is just attacking me. It feel, But it felt like a journey all the way around. And... And he, my husband was like, what you talking about? Don't, 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 don't say that. Don't, just don't say that. And I'm like, man, no. I'm like, I know. I feel something. Something is weird. Like, because I was even doing that. You know, I, I can't stop what my body does. And two, I still, at that time, I didn't know I had PCOS and what was going on with my body. And I was fresh off of the blood transfusion and my body trying to recover and recuperate and stuff. And... It felt like I was a whole different person. It felt like it felt like this is just me talking about me now. It felt like who I was, who I was, like somebody just took that person away from me. And now I'm stuck with this whole new person. And I'm starting from scratch. And I felt powerless. And I felt like, I don't know, like, I just felt like, does God hate me or something? Or, like, what did I do wrong? And I'm trying not to look at the camera. <laughs> but, you know, it, it just felt like I was blaming myself 
for so much and attacking myself so bad. I was beating myself down for my failures, for losing my job. Like, I, I never, even if I lost my job, I always quickly picked up another. I never went without a job. Hey, come on now. Like, anybody who know me, I was at 14 years old. What 14 year old, you know, go sneak and fucking get a job. Like, I did that, and my, my my dad understood he a hustler, but my mom was pissed. She was like, you need to just be a child and just be have your childhood. And I was like, no, I want to work. I want to earn something. I want to do what y'all do. I want to I wanna be amazing. Like, I want to, I don't, I see this going somewhere. I was thinking about my resume. What fucking 14-year-old you know? Think about resumes. What's going to be on their resume? And stuff like that. You know, they're worried about going to hang with friends and stuff like that. I didn't give a fuck about that. Because I knew that my friends weren't going to get me in a position of power. And that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Like, I wanted... Every, I was fighting so hard. Despite my failures. To try to achieve the dreams that I had and the goals that I wanted. And... Man, I hope this video don't go viral. This go... <laughs> piss me off <laughs> I'm not even and don't tag me either it go viral just let that shit go on don't tag me because I don't want to see myself crying and I don't want to see the comments either so yeah I I just felt like everything was taken from me and then I saw my husband gain his dream career his dream job and gain all of these promotions and gain, it's, it was like a fucking slap in my face. You know, I can admit that. And I've already had this talk with him, so this ain't gonna be no surprise, no shit. So, I saw him gaining things and going up, and I just felt like me just staying still. And I'm like, as a woman, what the fuck am I showing my daughter? Like, I need to show her this woman who can handle it all, who can do it all, who, who is strong. I got her now, growing up. Knowing that mommy doesn't have a job and that mommy's a stay-at-home mom and stuff, which I said I would never, ever be in my life. Like, I don't know how the fuck this is. <laughs> I always said that that was, uh, I get June, my husband said, see, that's what you get for going on them people's posts, questioning them what they do all day. And <laughs> God put you in a position. So I learned to shit the fuck up and stop worrying about what other people do. I ain't lying to you. Because you can get put in the positions to have those questions answered by experience. So, it was, it just, it felt like, I felt like a bum for the first time ever. Like, I felt like I was nothing. And I'm slowly coming out of that shell. I'm slowly starting to come. I, from 2015 all the way to now, I was just drowning in my sorrows. Even though, you know, I, you would never know because I post so much positive shit online. You would never even know. My husband was like, if these people knew who the fuck you were, <laughs> uh, off of camera, in this house, and with the people you know, man, baby, half of them probably wouldn't even like you. <laughs> or they would, but, you know, you, you don't show the real, real you. You don't never talk about that. You be playing Ring Around the Rosie, but... I just felt like everything was stripped away from me. And like, I felt like God put me, took me out of my comfort zone, threw me in the middle of the jungle. No pots, no pans, no roof over my head and said, hit, survive, learn to build a house, learn to cook food with fire, although you've never done this before. Learn to make pots and pans from scratch and, um, you know, no vehicle, no nothing, no protection, no covering. I'm just out here exposed, vulnerable. And I felt like a fraud and like I was living a lie. So, <sighs> this is kind of therapeutic. <laughs> is, let's not make a habit of me crying on camera though. Like, that shit not cool. I'm not going to lie to you. I hate crying in front of people. Like, especially like. It, you know, I be liking the memes where people be uh, talking about people crying on camera and stuff like if they re-cry, do they have to start the video over again? I said, I never want to be, see, when you be curious about what other people doing, I'm putting it in a position. So, yeah, I just, I surrendered to the calling and to the journey. And 
what I think and what I realize in this is I feel like with this journey, I want to say it right. I looked at it from this perspective. This is my 2020 perspective on it and just my reflection of what has happened and where I am now. I felt like I went through all of that so that I could bring other people through. Somebody has to be the Moses. Somebody has to be the person who endures. Think about it. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Maya Angelou, Barack Obama. Um, let's think about all these people who came before us, Black Panthers. And if they had stayed silent, if they had never went through anything, if they had never, Ruby Bridges, if they had never went through anything, if they had never endured, if they had stayed silent, where would we have been? Where would we be now in society? You know, now, now with the, the age of social media, anything is possible. Although Facebook and Instagram is trying to regulate a lot of shit so that we can either pay for it or uh, con certain types of content can be regulated because, you know, some people in the public don't get it and some people are going to push back against a lot of things but there is no reason why you can't have it all there's no reason why you can't raise kids and make a living and i'm not talking about sitting in a cubicle working nine to five because there are a lot of people as a property manager i know there were a lot of kids that i had to let inside of that house because their parents were working all day and couldn't do it so where does that leave our kids in the hands of whom they are vulnerable to whom you know what I mean? If you don't have parents that can help you out or family members, your kids are basically out there raising themselves. Think about it. If you work at a call center, why do you need to leave your house to do that type of work? You can sit they think about it. I worked for a call center. All the team lead is gonna do is log into their computer and see what you're doing on your screen, and they can hear you as you're talking to the customer. Why do you need to, to leave your house to do that? You can do that on your own computer or a company provided pro computer with the headset. All that's required of you is a room with no background no background noise. Let's think about it too. <laughs> In some of these other jobs, these other positions such as accounting, HR and stuff like that, some of that stuff you really can do from home. There are people that are doing it from home. That are doing things from remote locations. There are nurses that are travel travel nurses. There are nurses that are work from home nurses. There are people in the medical field that work from home. Why can't doctors travel from house to house like they used to? Why is that not a thing? I mean, you charge people accordingly, but why? Advertising. Nobody is really doing the people like people like us can't afford billboards and tv advertisements and honestly that's a for some people that's a waste of money that's not even effective advertising so social media getting to know people that's the wave now that is the advertising wave that is you google google um the google analysts and <clears throat> ads and stuff like that that is the wave people are on their phones all day People are on YouTube all day. People are, technology is the way. It's the way. Digital is what it is and it's not going anywhere. So I believe that people like me who got pushed out of their comfort zone, got pushed out of their comfort zone for a reason. To come out, we had to go through it, go through the fire so that we can show other people how to be better in the situation that we were in. Not everybody is built like us. That's just what it is. The strongest get picked out. The ones who can survive, who can fight, who have a certain mindset, they get picked out because they are the leaders. And I had to realize I am a leader in my particular calling. When you get called, it's not easy. It's not it never fair. But you will you are of value and there is a result, whether you get to live to see it or not. 
There is a reason behind it. You are a piece to the puzzle. And I just feel like I had to look at it from that perspective. I had to stop beating myself down because that was not going to help and that wasn't going to make things better. It wasn't me beating myself down, me listening to other people and what they think and what they say and what they feel. It wasn't going to help with anything, with any of the goals that I was trying to achieve. You know, on the brighter side, I am here for my kids. From when my first born, I was not able to do that. For the first three years of her life, I was a week weekend mother because I worked so much. Until she got to preschool, then I was kind of able to, I was in a better position. I did not want that. I didn't want her to know that for her entire life. And I'm blessed that I'm able to be here from the beginning with my second born. Because as a mother, they don't talk about this too, but you beat yourself up a lot. For the things that you feel like you lack or you didn't do. And, you know, a lot of people aren't going to talk about the things that I'm going to talk about. We're going to do this all 2020. Crying or not. I'm going to just do it. So, just whatever. <laughs> I might not play it back. So, y'all might get these extra long videos. But, I'm, I'm not lying to you. I had to look at it from a different angle. And since I've looked at it from that angle, things have been happening. I mean, it's not happening all at once and, oh, you know, coming away that I will, I want, you know, we have these big goals and these big dreams. So it's not, it's coming. I see more movement. It's not where I want it to be just yet, but I do see more movement just in this month alone versus last year this month last year since i looked at it from a different perspective and stopped beating myself up and start being grateful for what i have and using what i don't have to fuel me to be greater 